So this is the image that started our balloon conservation work. This was back in April of 1996. Ginger and I were doing yard work at our, at our residence there at Blue Lake, and all of a sudden Ginger says, hey, there's one of those checkered birds. So we had been doing wildlife photography together for a number of years, and so we went in and grabbed our lenses and photographed this image back in 1996, and that was really the first common loon image either of us had ever made. In fact, we didn't even know the name of the bird. You had to go in and, and check, and uh, Ginger thought it was a loon, but we had to verify that. And so that's really what started our conservation efforts. We've done a few things over the years. We've done banding. Um, we've done a lot of work to promote public education. We gave presentations like this to a number of different places. Um, Madeline has helped with our conservation. Ginger formed the Keep the Gift Alive Fund to provide fry in uh, Tishless Lakes for the common loon chicks. We had Loon Lake Loon Association, LADFW, who also provided funding to purchase fry for chicks at select nesting lakes. We had legislation passed in the year 2010 to restrict the use of lead fishing tackle at 13 common loon nesting lakes in the state of Washington. This has made a tremendous difference. We will show you what has happened because of that. And it's something that's truly remarkable. We installed National Avian Guards at different nest sites to keep bald eagles away, keep them off the nest. Uh, we've had uh, great personnel and program support from Biodiversity Research Institute, WDFW, the Forest Service, and the U.S. Army Corps. <coughs> And we've had assistance from many individuals, like I mentioned earlier, who we call loon rangers in a lot of different organizations. Mortalities are something that we deal with. It's something that we started keeping a record of in 1996. And the way things started out, it was quite dismal. We were having a large number of common loons that were perishing because of lead fishing tackle. Uh, you can see lead sinkers in the gizzard of this parish loon. This was a Lake Chelan mortality. So back in the early days through 2008, we had this distribution. Lead toxicosis was the leader. Um, then it was trauma, 30%. Then fishing net entanglement. And you can see the other values there. But back in that era, a lot of the mortality that common ones were suffering was because of lead fishing tackle. So we've had a big change. We had the legislation that was passed in 2010. We think that, at least in part, that has been responsible for the transformational change that has occurred in why common loons are perishing. You can look at the two columns located on the right side of this particular graph. 1996 to 2010, we had nine lead toxicosis events from fishing cattle. Since 2010, we've had zero. Yay. From 2011 to 2018, we have not had a single lead toxicosis case. So go ahead and applaud. Yeah. 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 We have a lot of good things to say about fishermen. We've, we've watched them over the years. We now see that they're paying more attention they're not casting in the direction of common loons. Uh, most of them are using alternative types of uh, tackle, which we think is wonderful. And we see that there's much higher regard for common loons on, on a, a fishing lake. And there's mutual respect now between what the loons need and those people that are fishing what they need. So we think this is a tremendous turn of events. We can't stand here and say because of what we passed in legislation has led to this total. You know, I'd be foolish to stand here and suggest that. But at least we think that it has helped. If you take a look at trauma, and I must mention here that we're dealing with a different number of years, 15 years in the, in the early period and only eight years in the second period. What is the definition of trauma? Trauma is, is what happens when, like, balloons fly into a power line. When loons land on a street instead of a lake, uh, various forms of trauma, it's accidental death, essentially, for loons. 
unknown is uh, still there, although we're getting better at identifying why loons perish. Uh, the number of shot loons compared to the time period is about the same. We had three back then, we've had one in this second period. Fishing net problems are down, and you can see the rest of the numbers there. So we're feeling extremely good about the transformational change in why common loons are dying. We can say categorically and summarize this by saying fishing-related mortalities prior to 2010 were 41%, and after 2010, they are zero, absolutely zero. And Ginger and I have all of the appropriate agencies that record common loons perishing report these incidents to us. So essentially all that information is filtered down to us eventually, and uh, we keep a record of all of those. There are now 53 some cases that uh, we call common mortalities. And what has taken place since then is that bald eagle predation has grown tremendously from <coughs> virtually zero back in that early time period to now being the leading cause of common loon mortality. You can see the predation before 2010 was zero of 32 mortalities. And since then, we've had 16 of the 22 mortalities because of bald eagles. That's 73% of the mortality is being caused by bald eagles. There were three cases of bald eagle predation in 2017 and 13 in 2018. That was 12 chicks and one adult. So it's been a transformational change and um, it's something that is almost hard to believe, but it's definitely occurring. And there's another adult, second adult so in the future. So. Okay, so we'll have to add that one. The other causes of death for reported common loon mortalities seem to continue at similar rates, such as trauma, um, some of the diseases that common loon get in different parts of the country. Do you so, know why the bald eagle percentage is so much higher? What's the problem? <laughs> All you have to do is read this slide. There we go. Um, that's a good question, thank you. Um, you can see that there were only 100 bald eagle nests in prior to 2005, and now 1,334 in 2015. 13.3 time increase in 10 years. Uh, where we'll go from here, we don't know, but you know there will be a leveling off. Uh, we're seeing in some parts of North America where common loons are actually predating each other. Why are the uh, excuse bald me, eagles? bald eagles are actually predating each other. Why are they uh, increasing so dr dramatically? Well, there's, there's quite a few reasons for that. Uh, they're protected. Uh, we have a tremendous conservation effort to restore bald eagles. And so this is kind of a consequence of that. We, we think it's, a, it's something that's good. I mean, we, we save the bald eagle from extinction, essentially. But now it's, it's kind of gone too far, and it'll take some time for things to level out and for bald eagles to become less numerous. This is a time period also when common loons and everything else that bald eagles predate will have to adjust to the presence of more bald eagles. They'll become more savvy. They'll learn how to avoid bald eagles in a, in a better way. So things will probably balance out. Uh, any biologists out here that disagree with that? Anybody ever like to say something about that? You got a comment on that, Jeff? No. <laughs> um, I wanted to say Sea Dock Society is doing a study on bald eagle predation in Puget Sound because so many of the endangered species, marble murrelets, et cetera, uh, seabirds, the decline is becoming quite alarming and they are seeing not only problems with prey for these, for the birds in Puget Sound, but bald eagle predation has been reported and seen as, as a tremendous <coughs> increase. So the study is now being done on bald eagle predation of endangered species. So we should get some answers from CDOC here in a year or so. Well, didn't you also say that the loon population was increasing? So there would naturally be more uh, more deaths if there were a lot more wounded. 
that's true. Uh, there can be more moon mortalities because there are more moons. That's, yeah. that's very true. But not due to eagles. I mean, well, the eagles around the moon lakes used to be an occasional one, and then occasional one and two, and now we see four or five, and at North and South Twin Lakes, we counted in one afternoon 47. So I think it's an out of balance, or out of, you know, the numbers are huge. And Washington is the second largest state to have bald eagles, second to Alaska. And all the other moon communities in Northeast states um, are reporting that they are getting an increase in bald eagles, and they couldn't believe our numbers. But now they're saying, wow, we've got the same situation. Our eagles are increasing and we're losing loons. So here we see a bald eagle at Clarence Lake. This is at the boat launch. Uh, bald eagles, um, back over the years, the last 20 years, uh, Ginger and I have been very enamored with. We like to fly. We like to photograph anything that will fly, and uh, we love bird photography. So we've acquired quite a few bald eagle images over the years. This is how bald eagles come in and attempt to capture something. You can see those talons or just incredibly efficient. Uh, this particular bird was coming in trying to capture a common loon chick, which was uh, just off of our bow. Common loons, uh, this is at the north end of Swan Lake. Common loons have become so intelligent and have learned to avoid bald eagles in, in certain situations to the degree where they will bring their chicks over to our boat knowing that the bald eagle likely won't come there. And they actually dodge around their boat when they see bald eagles coming. So they're incredibly intelligent, and uh, bald eagles are incredibly efficient killers. So this shows uh, mortality of a bald eagle on a common loon. This was something we photographed at Swim Bay over in the Puget Sound area. These are some of our wintertime images that we've been able to capture of bald eagles over at Coeur d'Alene Lake. We like bald eagles and snow images. This is an image that I acquired while hiking in Yellowstone National Park oh, probably 20 years ago now. That's the Gallatin Range uh, in the background. This was one of the first confirmed bald eagle nesting uh, situations that Yellowstone had. They, they were devoid of bald eagle nesting for a number of decades, and they finally started building up their numbers and started to also report nesting. This is a bald eagle perched in a tree looking for something to predate. This is a female bald eagle bringing in a black oyster catcher along the Strait of Juan de Fuca at a nest site there. And another bald eagle at South Twin Lake. This is a pair also along the Strait of Juan de Fuca with their eaglet in the center there. This was a failed predation attempt on a common loon chick. This was at Meadow Lake, but we're farther to the northeast in our state. This bald eagle was harassing a common loon chick that had gotten separated from its adults and its parents, and uh, bald eagle dove in to try to capture the chick and came out with this massive vegetation wrapped around its talons. The bald eagle thought it had the chick and went over and perched on this tree, and then when he took all of the vegetation off his talons, he couldn't find the chick anymore. I'm like, what happened? I couldn't feel it yet. And this is how common loons and their chicks react when bald eagles are around. They get into this high alert status. We'll continue now with our Loon Lake Tales in the evening. Oh, sure, that'd be great. Uh, Julie's suggesting an intermission. Go ahead.